Yo, 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 GK Nation. GPS. The Gold Force. Yo, what's up? Yeah. Oh, my God. An extension of the Grown Folks Kids Show. Introducing the host with the most. The great gun. Keeping it in here. This is going to be fun. Because I'm Batman. Yo, yo, yo. What's going down? What's going down? It's the great gunny. And today I'm not on the golden mic. But I do have my main man on the golden mic. And we talking about some... uh, comic books and everyday life we at the spokon just me and the big dre Ir- no we're not gonna do that today just the dre irvin yeah so we at the 2019 spokon and this is g p s now why don't you introduce yourself to to all the fans out there oh i'm guy Pace. i'm an author and retired uh, it guy uh, he lives here in Spokane. That's what's up. That's what's up. So let's get back to uh, what we were discussing that wasn't on the mic. You were talking about you, your your favorite character, the Spider-Man. Yeah. So let, let's get back into Spider-Man. Let's get into why Spider-Man intrigued you so much. Well, I was, uh, you know, when I was what young, when Spider-Man first came out, I was reading uh, reading his origin story in a Fantastic Four oh, comic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, back in uh, 63, 64, somewhere in there. I can't remember exactly when it was. But it was a, it was a heartbreaking story. You know, the thing about his uncle Diane and, and all that stuff. It was just a heartbreaker. And that stuck with me uh, for years. I mean, I've, I followed Spider-Man, uh, the amazing Spider-Man, for ever. <laughs> right, right. That, that, that ever-going, on-lasting motto with great... Power comes great responsibility. Yeah, that never that's and always been the same. And it doesn't waver, and it and it always falls upon us, you know. And that's one of the reasons why Spider-Man has such a a great hold upon the the youth as well as the mature. I mean, we we still look at that, and that still holds truth, you know. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But you know, Peter Parker had had his issues, and uh, I think one of the things that came out. You know, in those early years of the comic, was his friends dealt with drugs, Harry Osborn. Right, right. And uh, and then we had race issues that were going on back in the early or late '60s, and right. they and they were reflected in that comic. Right. Some of the characters were, you know, mixed race. You know, and, and of course it's all in New York, so right. You know, the big melting pot. And uh, so, and I think Marvel number one was very, very uh, brave. They approached a lot. And, you know, it uh, really kind of came through on uh, in the comic. And I think it affected a lot of young people. So so I'm going to ask you something, because me and my friends, we've, we've uh, had this discussion before, but you think Harry Osborn was mixed because his hair... That wasn't a normal hair. Him and him and Norman had some. Uh, looked like they had like some some rough hair, man. Yeah. Well, he had the definition of what is peak. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Yeah, I know it, it looked like cornrows, you know, Corn, back yeah, to the side, like he had finger side, waves yeah. or something. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, so I think he was probably. But you know, you got to think about it. You know, we're talking about New York. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're talking about a uh, very mixed population. Uh, right. And if if. And Dickens, uh, exactly, who yeah, he's been just all didn't over even the map. About is, that. He could have been Puerto Rican, you know. So it's just kind of a, you know, it could have been. That. Yeah, man, man, I didn't even think but about the Puerto Ricans. But nobody made a point of it. Sure, you sure didn't, because it was all about the the story. It was all about character and story. That's the good thing, man. And I love me some some Spider Man when I was younger. They used to have them at the at the at the fair at the air show all the time. They would have someone dress up and be Spider Man at the air show. Well, yesterday we were talking about Mysterio and oh. Doc Ock. Oh man, some we of can... his great enemies, you know, and fantastic stuff. Could you imagine, man, that the three of the the three of the most lowly enemies of Spider-Man have been the three of the best enemies yeah. on screen. Mm-hmm. Doc Ock, you know, you got Mysterio, which I'm so that we can go into Mysterio at, at a long thing. And then Jake the Green Gillenhall Goblin was great. Yeah. And then and, the Green Goblin. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Green Goblin, but but you get you got to go back to 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 the Vulture, man. Oh, the Vulture. I yeah. can't believe how they made the Vulture. Uh, man, my, well, it is Michael Keaton, yeah. but yeah, but they made the Vulture a a character that you felt for, mm-hmm. you know, that you that you rooted against and then rooted for 
knowing his situation. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that was such a good, a good, good plot twist. And he's not dead, so that means he can come <laughs> back. He comes back, yeah. You know, he can come back because yeah. he's in jail. And well, everybody knows, spoiler out there if you ain't uh, seen the movie. <laughs> you, you saw the movie, right? No. Oh, no, okay. No, well, I won't spoil it there. for you. And I won't spoil it for you. I'm going to leave it alone. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah. GPS Nation. Yeah. But, uh, so, but, um... Let's see here, man. Yeah, just go, just going to see the Spider Man. We're not gonna hold my man Guy up because. But but before before we let you go, man, we want to hear about what you're doing out here. You know, you got oh, yourself a book. Yeah, I've got three books. Okay, uh, they're they're Christian science fiction. All right. Uh, there are four young adult teen readers. Uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's hard, hard to explain all of it because you know most of it came out in a huge mad mad rush. <laughs> Oh wow! Well, yeah, that's uh, a creative but, you know, process. Yeah, creative process, but uh, uh, but yeah, they're they're available on Amazon and uh, uh, iBook and or actually Apple Books now. All right. So so give <laughs> us uh, the names of the book. <clears throat> Sudden Mission. All right. Is the first one. Nasty Leftovers is number two. Okay. And Carolina Dawn is is the last one. Man, I like that sound of that. Oh yeah. Well, uh, Sudden Mission's a. Uh, Basically, three friends uh, have to save the world. Wow. Yeah. You know, the main character, Paul, gets assigned by God to go uh, cross country and save the world. And then uh, Nasty Leftovers is uh, cleaning up a little bit after the mess. Oh, wow. That sounds uh, good, man. And, uh, and they go to Washington, D.C. and clean things up. And then Carolina Dawn is the, I shift the main character to uh, Amy, who's the girlfriend. All right. And, uh. She and her friends are saving North Carolina. <laughs> Man, so is that the last? Is that the last? That's the last. Of this, so, so you know, there's, this there's not going to be a fourth one. Not in this group, no. Oh, okay. Well, all I know is that there's got to be somebody out there that's listening to this that's going to read your books and make that a picture. Because if they can make the Maze Runner a movie, they can surely make your books a movie. Because that little description makes me want to go read it and watch it. <laughs> so, man, let's uh. Let's get that going. So, but we're going to let our main man go to his panel that he's going to do out here at the Spokan in Spokane, Washington. So, what's your next panel that you're going to? Uh, the one I'm going to is academia and industry. They're going to be talking about, you know, the differences between, you know, academic approaches and, and industry approaches to research. All right. All right. Well, look at that. More than just nerd stuff, real nerd stuff. So, <laughs> but this is the great gunny on the GPS with my main man guy. And we shutting it down here at the Spokane. We'll be right back after these messages.